Well, this is incredibly frustrating. Those eggs were due to hatch today, and these guys stopped sitting yesterday. I don't know what the problem was, but it's very upsetting. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this pair. I'm not sure if I'll let them do another round now, or wait for later in the year when it's a bit warmer. But anyway, let's have a look at the Barless Pigeons. So you guys probably know that this Barless Hen is the only homozygous Barless that I have at the moment. But you might not know that she isn't the only Barless that I've ever had. When I bought this hen, she actually came as a pair. She came with a mate, but I didn't keep the cockbird. And that is because he actually had feed blindness. Which is a condition that isn't too uncommon in Barless Pigeons, unfortunately. But it really badly affects their vision which I'm sure you can understand is not ideal for a racing pigeon project. So I never actually bred from the cockbird. I only kept this hen and I put her with two different very good cockbirds. So both of the times I bred with this hen, she only produced a single baby. I'm not sure if she has a problem herself or if it was just coincidence that we had single nesters both times. But first I paired her with this red cock. Now he is an unraced cock, he never raced himself, but he has been an exceptional breeder. He is probably one of the best I have and just about every bird he's produced that's gone to race has had success. So when she was paired with a red cock, the Sparless Hen produced a blue checker baby, and we'll have a look at him in a second. But in the second round, I paired her with another dark check cock. And this cockbird has raced, and he actually had a lot of success himself, and his father was very successful as well. And they produced a blue bar baby. You might be a little confused as how a Barless and a dark check produced a blue bar. And the simple answer is the dark check cock just carries the gene for bar, which means that when he is paired to a blue barless hen, half of his babies will be bar, and we only got one and it happened to be a bar. Now I don't actually have any updated footage of the young blue bar because he actually went to race. And he has successfully flown home from a 250km race, which for this stage of the project is far enough for me. I know a lot of you guys watch Kurt Maney's channel. He's a good friend of mine and he's also working on a barless project. But you can probably tell we're both going about it in very different ways. Personally, I'm focusing on pure quality. I'm not breeding very many pigeons in this project, but the small number that I am breeding, I'm really focusing on having them as high quality as I possibly can. So there's no turkey barless here. I'm making sure even my barless splits can make it home from at least 250 kilometers before we breed from them. Anyway, I said we'd look at the blue checker baby. So let's go out and have a look at him. So this guy on the floor here is my other barless split. And he is a cock. I've got him paired to this hen, and she's a blue checker, she's a blue checker pied, but she carries the bar pattern. So when I pair these two together, about a quarter of their babies will be bar pattern, which, which isn't a huge amount of... And I know that's not a huge amount of their young, that'll be the bar pattern babies that are the ones I'm after, but she is a very, very well-bred racing pigeon. She's actually related to him. Her grandfather is his father, I think? And like I said earlier, I am aiming for quality over quantity here. So only a quarter of these babies will be blue bar, which are the ones I'm after. Half of the Czech babies will also carry barless. And I might breed from them in the future, but they'll go into the race team. Anyway, I was hoping to give you a closer look at the cockbird, but he's hiding behind his hen. So I might catch him out and we'll have a closer look. So here he is for a closer look. I do need to say one thing before we get started though. When I bred this pigeon, I had a lot of people tell me that I was wasting my time, that you needed to use clean blue bars to breed barless, and you guys are wrong. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be arrogant, but you are wrong. I know exactly what I'm doing here. If you want to have a look at my how to breed barless video, it explains it fairly well. But the basic idea is that we can use the visible pattern to be able to discern if the bird is a barless carrier or not. Now I know this guy is definitely a barless carrier because his mother was barless. That means he 100% is a split barless pigeon. That means that he's going to pass on the barless gene to half of his babies. When he's paired with the blue checker hen outside, she's going to pass on the bar gene to half of her babies. He's going to pass on the barless gene to half of his babies. So if we produce a blue bar baby, we know that it didn't receive the check gene, it's more dominant. So any blue bar babies have to be barless carriers. So then using this method, I can produce a few barless carriers out of some of my very best racing pigeons, pair them together, and then we'll get some barless pigeons that are a few generations back from the original barless hen, and are much, much, much higher quality than they would be if I just paired the barless hen to an average racing pigeon, and then put her babies together, and I'd produce plenty of barless, but they wouldn't be very good, and I'd be wasting my time. Doing it the way I am, working down through the pattern alleles, and pairing her to my very best racing pigeons, Although it takes a lot longer to get our first barless, 
I really am saving a lot of time and not wasting any time producing rubbish virus pigeons. Anyway, let's have a close look at this guy. He actually is a very nice pigeon. He's a bit bigger than I was expecting. Most of the babies that come from the red cock, who was the father of this guy, aren't that big. They're usually fairly small. If we have a closer look at his head, you can sort of tell that he is an F1, which means that one of his parents obviously wasn't a purebred racing pigeon. But all in all, he is actually a very nice pigeon, and I'm very impressed with this one. When I just hold him here, you can see he's got a pretty good balance to him. He's not perfect by any means, but that's to be expected when he's the first generation in a project like this. But I'm really happy with this pigeon. Anyway, I'll go and put him back, and we'll finish up talking about my ballast project. Alright, well that was a bit more ranting and rambling than I was expecting to do. But, let's talk about my plans with these guys. So I've bred these guys early, because I would like to get another generation out of their babies before the end of the year. Basically, I'm hoping to get a blue bar hen out of this pair, and I do only have a 1 in 8 chance of that happening in this round, so hopefully I get lucky. But the plan is to take a young hen from this pair, and pair it to the blue bar cock who raced this year, who was flown out to 250 k's. And that gives us the chance of having another homozygous bilis, which will go into the race team next year. Now we do have to rely on chance a little bit there. Taking the baby from this pair and pairing it to the blue bar cock still only gives us a 1 in 4 chance of producing a bilis. But it's better than a 0 chance. So that's what we're going to do, and I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. Alright, well it's a bit later in the day now and I've done some thinking. I've decided that I'm going to separate these guys, put them back in the loft, and pair them back up in a month or two when I start breeding the rest of the race team. So, let's catch them and put them back in the big loft. I think this is his first time in the new loft. Let's see how he settles in. He is a fairly gentle old bird, this red cock. He doesn't like fighting too much, so he's probably going to take a lower perch in the loft. But I'll give him some space and he can settle in. 